Hello, let's see if we are live. Um, here we go. It is looking good for me actually being live. And who is going to come and join me? And Kerry. Hello, Kerry <laughs> has come to join me. So it's just you and me at the moment, Kerry. <laughs> And oh, lovely Amanda Fowler. Good mo uh, morning, afternoon, even. Amanda, hi. And oh, I can see some more people jumping on. So that is good. You don't thought it could just be me. Could it have been me and Kerry here this afternoon? <laughs> um, and we have Isabel. Hi, Isabel. Welcome along. Um, so, and Sarah. Oh, Sarah says, Hello Stampin' Up Grandma. Yes, I am her Stampin' Up Grandma. <laughs> she is at third level in my in my team. So hi Sarah, welcome along. Nice to have you with us this afternoon. And Mary, Mary must be up super early because Mary's over in Canada. So good morning, Mary. Thank you for, for coming on and, and joining me live. Bless you. Um, so yes, goodness me, this is this is me actually going live live for the first time. So all very um all very scary. Um it's oh it's nine o'clock there for Mary, so not not too bad. So you're East Coast then, Mary. Um yeah, you must be East Coast, mustn't you? I couldn't remember whereabouts in, in Canada you were. But yes, she must be. Um, we've got um, Ellen joining us from the US as well. Hi, Ellen. Whereabouts are you in the US? And lovely Sally Bowman. Good afternoon, Sally. I keep going to say good morning because I usually do stuff in the morning here. Oh, Teresa. Hello, Teresa. Goodness me. Teresa, I, I've known for quite a long time. And um, I'm surprised to have you with us this morning, but lovely to have you with us. And Massachusetts Ellen is from. Goodness me, well lots of you um, coming on. Um, so for those that don't uh, know me personally, I am Elizabeth Shannon, also known as Liz. Um, and until March, I was a completely face-to-face -face Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So I taught classes to lots of lovely ladies. Um, I did um, about 10 classes a month, I taught lots of people, lots of things, and we all had a lot of fun together. Um, oh, I'm just going to say hello to Gail, who's joining, and Mary is, yes, yeah, Southwest Ontario, that's where she is. Um, and Mary Ann from Texas, bless you all. Oh, how lovely to have you all with me this morning. Um, so, yeah, I, I was totally face-to-face. -to -face. I didn't do anything other than those face-to-face -face classes and events to go out and meet people to bring them to class. So, uh, yeah, then COVID happened. So um, what I have been doing uh, since March is I've been doing um, classes for my lovely ladies in a private Facebook group. So all this, although this is the very first time I have gone live in the real world, um, this morning I did my 29th live with my lovely ladies in the little kind of safe place that's not too scary. Um, and yes, but this is my first time actually going live with you. So these are some of the projects that we have done since March, um, but I wanted to show my ladies this morning what we'd been doing over that whole time. I had a plan and my plan was that when we got back together, that was July that's just gone that didn't happen, um, I would ha we'd have a big event in a hall and I'd decorate the hall with everything that we had made um, since lockdown. Yeah, not so much because here we still are, <laughs> no end in sight, uh, UK locking down again a bit more. So um, I thought instead I'd show them what we've done so far and just to show you, I have designed and made, that is over 300 cards for classes um, and we did some launch parties and then of course there's all the 3D, yeah we've got loads and loads of this, I've got boxes of it. 
So I have been busy, um, but it does mean I have completely let my Elizabeth's Craft Room side of my business on Facebook and on my blog go a bit. I have to say so sorry about that if you've been a, a follower of mine it hasn't it hasn't had the love it should have done um, but I am going to um, try and do something about that oh I'm getting a couple of wows for the number of cards I know crazy woman and I will always say I go I go too far I always I overachieve a bit with um the number of projects as my my ladies would tell you oh Teresa said she misses our, our, our workshops Teresa before she moved to um back to the states used to come to my uh, classes for oh, two three years Teresa quite a long time so uh, yeah so yeah we miss you too so uh yeah it's it's been a kind of a weird time so yeah i have been a bit of the invisible woman um in the um in the real world uh so what about you what have you been doing are you a stamping up demonstrator because i know lots of my um my friends are stamping up demos oh there's nina hi nina nice to see you um so are you a stamping up demonstrator have you managed to are you having face-to-face -face classes again is that safe where you are you bet you you are in new zealand i know and some places are okay um and or have you gone online what have you been doing i would love to know tell me in the comments if you're watching live or if you're watching on catch up i would really love to know what's what's happening with you if you're a demo and if you're not a demo, have you been crafting? Um, we've been sharing lots of things. So as well as me doing shares, uh, my ladies have been sharing all sorts of different crafts. Um, I put it completely open for them on our on our little group. So we've been seeing um, what people have been growing, what they have been baking, um, what they've been sewing, what they've been knitting, as well as their paper craft, which is what brought us all together in the first place. So it's been really great to see so many creative things going on and I think especially for people who you know who've been on their own quite a lot through this you know this is what was so important to me was to to keep my group together um so Isabel says she's been doing live since March and I encouraged her to start yeah so I did I have been doing those lives but you know just kind of secretly <laughs> but yay for you Isabel um Ellen is a demonstrator. She's not doing face-to-face -face yet. No, I think that is most of us. But Mary has been able to start small classes um, last month and she started a vlog. Yay, Mary. So go and see Mary on Dick. Tell us, tell us what your blog name is, Mary, so we can come and visit you. That would be lovely. Okay, so yes, I've been doing, um, pretty much, I've been doing something every day for my lovely ladies. So we've been doing Modern Monday, so something they've never seen before. And Technique Tuesday, so a technique video um, of mine from the past, because I've got lots of techniques to fall back on. We're getting through them a bit now for Technique Tuesday. I've been doing a live on Wednesday mornings with my ladies, as I said. Um, Thursday's been a bit of a mixed bag. We did start off with 3D Thursday and then 3D's got a bit much and we've done some other things. Um, we did a, um, a colour challenge on a Thursday for a while as well. We're just about to start Festive Friday um, because we've um, been doing a Stamparatus, a little Stamparatus video series, but we're just about to start Festive Friday in the lead up to Christmas. And I do Sketch Saturday. And then I lie down on Sunday. <laughs> well, actually, I do the housework on Sunday. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's been pretty full on, and uh, but really lots of fun and very very much fun keeping my um, keeping my lovely crafting ladies together. So when I do my lives, I do a little demo, and that's what I'm planning to do for you um, today. Let's see who else. Um, Sarah says her business was just starting to take off before COVID, but non-existent at the moment, but she's back on with her mojo again. So Sarah is, um, is, is doing some stamping up again. We love that, Sarah. Um, Pam is joining us, I see, and Alison, um, she's done a couple of collaborations in a private group with her bestie Isabel. 
Um, and she's holding an online challenge every week on a Wednesday, open to all. Fantastic. So brilliant, um, Alison. So you'll be able to find her because it's on her Facebook page. So it's Alison Langford. Um, so go and have a look at her challenge as well. So, um, yeah, would you like to see me make something? Da, da, da. Now, I did um, a make for my lovely ladies this morning. And everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. So be prepared to laugh along with me. <laughs> I want to see smiley faces if it all goes crazy. Um, but we did get there. We did get there with them um, with this morning's. Um, Sally Bowman is saying she's running all her classes online and she, like me, was formerly face to face. Um, so she's done some Facebook Live for catalogue launch. So yes, I did a I did a week long launch for both catalogues. Um, but again, all on my group. You see, I haven't been out here in the real world. Okay, now I'm going to move you across to the other side of my craft room, where I'm set up to show you some um, uh, set, set, up, blah, 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 set up to show you a project and have a little look at um, at some Stampin' Up goodies. Um, so I will move you across. Sarah can't wait to see. So let's get you across there. Um, apologies, I don't have one of those fancy cameras that goes, ooh, I'm just going to pick you up and move you. So shut your eyes if you tend to feel dizzy. <laughs> and I'm climbing over my boxes of um, projects that are on the floor as well. Right, let's see whether we're set up under the under the camera. There we go. That is me, Elizabeth's Craft Room. So, yes, I do have a blog and I promise to populate it quite soon. <laughs> oh, Angela Bryce is joining us. Hi, Angela. Nice to have you along this afternoon. I'm just seeing whether there's any other messages I missed. It's quite um, it's quite a challenge sometimes looking between. I've got a, I've got a, um, an iPad over here. Um, so trying to keep an eye on any messages coming in. So we are going to have a little look at Sweetest Time this afternoon. Now I've got a big class coming up with this, um, so I'm not going to show you that just yet because my ladies have got that coming up very soon, but I will probably show you in a week or two, I'll show you that, um, some of the projects from there because they're fancy folds and they're, they're really fun. So I'll show you a bit of that in a week or two. Um, but we are going to look at Sweetest Time, which I am using for that class. It was one of those things that it wasn't the first thing on my list when I looked at um, the autumn winter. Uh, it's not called autumn winter, is it anymore? It's called the mini catalogue, which is this one here. And it's on page 21. And I wasn't really quite sure what these dies, how that all worked. Um, so it wasn't the first thing I picked up. But as soon as I've started making things with it, I have absolutely loved it. Um, and if you don't already have it, you need this. <laughs> my my lovely ladies call me a terrible temptress and it has been known that they thought they didn't need something, but it turned out they did. But that's just because I discovered that as well. So let me show you. So if we start with something simple, I'm just going to show you a couple of show and tells and then we'll make something. Um, just a really, really simple card. Um, it's featuring the ribbon now. You can see how much of this I've got left. <laughs> it's been one of my favourite ones. This is called the Sheer Ribbon. And again, that is in the um, in the mini catalogue. Just, it makes it, it absolutely makes it. So you don't need very much on the card when you've got a bow tied with that ribbon. Um, but I've just stamped the candle. I fussy cut that out. And if you can see the dies actually cut the veins of the holly leaves into them so they're quite um they're quite a, a a detailed die in a way but very easy to cut and you get two um you get a large and a small holly leaf die so you've got a bit of um uh, you know a little bit of a variation there um and i just fussy cut the candle out 
the candles come on um, on a block, or not on a block, but they come in a three, in a trio. So I've been stamping three at a time, and then when I just want one or two um, for the projects, and as ever, as soon as you start using, everything goes pink, doesn't it? There isn't, there isn't ever a stamp that goes blue. <laughs> um, but yes, you can see I've been using a lot of red with the candles, but a bit of green and some grey as well. So, um, yeah, so I've just cut um, cut that out. Um, I will show you in a moment how easy it is to stamp the little flames on the top as well. Really, really easy to line up. Sometimes you think, oh, is that going to be difficult? Am I going to need a, um, a, a stamparatus, a positioning tool to get that? But not with these. They are super easy. Um, so that's the... Um, that's the stamps and then we've got dies that as I say we've got some dies that um, cut the leaves cut out the shapes we've got a candy cane one as well um, but then we have these two dies here and these were the ones that I wasn't really sure how these were going to work these are edge dies so if I bring this card in here and I've done this with the red velvet paper so it doesn't show up, I know, on camera how nice this is, but you definitely you want to stroke this card. It is so lovely. But you can see that it has cut the edge where the candy canes are. So I've just taken a piece, this was about a three inch wide piece, and popped that through um, the stamping <laughs> stamp and cut and emboss machine is what it's officially called, or is it? Yes, I think that's what it's officially called. I'll tell you in a minute what we're calling it. But this is about three inches wide and then cut that through. And how you can tell on this one, if you look at the die, can you see you've got a ridgy bit that side and this side there's no ridge. Now the ridge is going to cut through. So the ridge piece is the edge. And on this one, I found it even more confusing because this has got a ridge, but this has as well because it's cutting a bit. So it's the one with the single um, fern in the middle. And then actually it's coming off now, but I did put little arrows with Sharpie marker to remind me that that is the edge bit. So we're going to make a card using the holly one. So let's start off. Oh, Mary says she just used those, um, these dies for a, a class that she's just done, a very similar card. Yeah, they, they are beautiful. They are absolutely beautiful. Um, and Jenny Jones is with me and Kathy from Toronto. Morning, Kathy. Um, oh, right. So Ellen, Ellen is calling her die cutting machine Blanche. I like that. I like it. They, we have to have a shorter name, don't we? Because stamping up cut and emboss machine is just way too much of a mouthful. Right, so I'm going to start off by stamping some candles. Now, my only hint with stamping candles is ink them up well. Don't go too near the top because you've got to just remember to get your, to get your flames in. So I'm going to put those down. Now, I don't know whether you find this, but with photopolymer stamps, I like to leave them on the cardstock a moment longer than I would for a rubber stamp. I just find they are better behaved and you get more transfer of the ink um, if you do that. All right, so our next bit of stamping is, as I said, the frame. Fl uh, flames. <laughs> And you have actually got three little flames, so you could set this up, if you were doing lots of these, you could set this up on the Stamparatus with a little flame for each candle. But as I'm just doing three here, I hope I didn't knock my head onto the overhead camera there, you can see that they're really well behaved. They are easy to stamp. Now this would also be really nice embossed in silver. I think that would look fantastic as well. So that's the start of our card. Now we are going to bring in the stamping cut and stamping up cut and it let me tell you what we're calling it. Our old machine um not to be named anymore um what when we first got it my husband called it the big boy 
And so all my ladies knew the, knew the big shot as the big boy. So when this one came, I said, what are we going to call it? And after a few suggestions, they've come up with a handyman. So this is the handyman in Elizabeth's craft room. Um, and when, when we get that little one, which we are desperate for, but when we get that little one, it's going to be called The Apprentice. So if you hear me say, I'm just going to reach for my handyman, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Have you all got one of these? Have you used the, um, the handyman, the new stamping up cut and emboss machine i bet most of you have um morning jill and jill has just reminded me of something because i can see that she has shared that i am on live and i was going i was supposed to ask you if you'd care to share me and i forgot so if you'd like to press share <laughs> apparently you can share me there you go so what I'm going to do is I am, have you got a piece of the shaded spruce here? And I'm going to put those, so this is the cut through bit at the top. And this is about five and a half inches by two and a half inches, this piece. And I'm going to run that through. Sarah says she used hers this morning and she loves it much more than the big boy. Let's hope the big boy's not too upset. Um, um, Leah says she hasn't seen it in person. Leah, it's wonderful. It is really good. And the, the best bit, I'll show you the best bit, is the storage because it closes up. I'm sure that, that was probably a bit loud because that was near my camera. But it closes up, so it is so easy to store. Much smaller kind of footprint on your craft table. Um, but yes, I am absolutely loving it. Now I've kept all the bits here because I am going to need some of these. And so I'm taking this. So that's the top bit. And here comes the bottom bit. And I want all of those little bits. Out they come. Let's see if I've got them all. I think we've got everything we want there. That looks good. Okay, so this is how it gives you an edge. So if you were going to build a card like that, it would give you an edge like so, um, which is a similar kind of effect that we did with the velvet here. But we're going to do something different. So I have cut, now where's my, here we go. And I've just put that in there and I still need that there and I still need some of that so let's keep that there this is the piece I'm looking for and so you don't have to watch me do it twice here's a piece I cut earlier um, if you're in the UK you'll laugh at that because <laughs> it's what they used to say on Blue Peter they used to do something really complicated off the camera and then show you and here's one I did earlier and uh, so that's this is one I did earlier and we're going to glue that on and I'm just going to dot a little bit of Tombow here and there. Now what I haven't tried with this but would be quite interesting maybe is to try the dimensional sheets um, underneath this which they are called, I think they're called the foam sheets but they're like the dimensional dimensionals bit in pieces and you can die cut them. I've been having a lot of fun with that so I don't know if any of you have done that. Um, with this one so a little bit of glue on there and then I'm going to stick that on now it's hanging over the edge a little bit but my card base is the same width as this piece that I have put um, so let's just pop that down down there let's see if I've got that straight it looks fairly straight okay so that's that piece there now it looks quite nice like that like that we could just leave it like that we could pop it up on the um, on the base like so and leave it like that and actually I'm looking at that and still thinking I'm gonna trim so I don't think I did on my original one and I'll show you the original afterwards because it's slightly different but I'm gonna trim those pieces off I'm more comfortable with that that looks better and you could put a layer underneath that as well. Um, oh, I'm missing some. Um, I'm missing some messages. Um, 
Sarah's, Sarah says her cats love that it closes up because there's more room for them to spread out and knock things over. <laughs> oh, and Kathy and, and Ellen like the look of this, so that's good. I'm glad you're liking the look of it. Okay, so we could just leave it like that, but what really makes these work fantastically, too much Tombow, Liz, um, is using a bit of embossing and how you do that or uh, not embossing it's the word i'm looking for here inlaying and how you do that is you use an another color that you have cut like this shaded spruce bit so i'm going to take the off cut piece that's all going to come out and believe it or not that all comes out in one piece you can see i've done this before and we're going to just put a couple of bits of Tombow in those areas. Am I on camera properly? And then we're going to pop that in. And it's actually quite well behaved doing it. You can give it a little wiggle if you need to and pop those in. Now you will get gluey on your fingers. That is a guaranteed um, doing this. You could use fine tip glue. I'm guessing you could use fine tip glue, but I, I must admit I am a Tombow girl through and through, so I would always reach for the, the Tombow first. It gives you that wiggle room when you put it down, and once it's stuck, it's really stuck. So when you send this card through the post, you're not having bits come off. It is perfect. So I do love a bit of this. Now, I hope you don't mind watching me put this together. Now you can leave some of them white if you want to. Um, there's nothing to stop you um, leaving some white space and in fact on my other example I did that so I will share as I say I'll show you that in a in a moment. Oh that was a bit blobby. Um, so you can leave some white um, but actually filling up all the pieces works really well too. And these are really quite detailed die cut pieces, but the handyman's so good, <laughs> or Blanche, um, that uh, it's, they come out beautifully and they are, yeah, they cut beautifully on here. So it's not too difficult, as you can see, to do this. That's going to be a little bit. A little bit gluey. So I can keep on going or I can stop and uh, and put, do something else. Now something else you can do is run it through one more time with some red cardstock underneath the middle bit where all the berries are. And then you can do inlaid berries as well, which would be rather spectacular. Um, your other alternative, if you want to uh, be a little bit quicker with it, um, if you're making several of these, that might be um, might take you a little while. It depends how much time you've got. Um, but if you want a quicker um, a quicker option, just take a marker or a blend and colour in. Now I am seeing the um, I'm using here. This is the dark poppy parade. Could have maybe the best the better thing here would be to go for. Um, to go for real red or maybe even cherry cobbler to get that um, right down um, because that that might cover up a little bit more of the um, the candle and if you've done a brighter color with the candle um, yeah that might have noticed but if you do red of course that would be quite hidden um, another option would be to put some um, bling which I did have some lying around on my desk this morning but I've put it somewhere safe. So you could have some bling in there as well. That could be a that could be another option. Actually, there's some gold here. I was looking for my red um, rhinestones, but you could put some gold ones in and they look rather good in there, look. So, ooh. And these come, uh, these are the facet, no, they're not. These are the gilded gems. And these come in different sizes, so you can actually, um, size them with the different sized um, little pieces there. So they are 
good fun to use. Now that is the one I'm looking for. I just suddenly realised I'm missing a couple down here in the corner. There's one of them. This one there, where's he? I can see where he is. That's one final one. And then those are those are all in. Now if you're making this, having put this one in, you now have this one. So you can make another card and do it in reverse. And this was my original one was the, and you can see here where I have left some white um, just for a bit of contrast. So it depends whether you like, um, whether you like that. Oh, um, I'm missing again some messages. Um, Sally says clever inlaying. Um, Kathy says her new machine is the polar bear. I like the polar bear. Um, Sue is joining us from Cardiff. Hi, Sue. Another person who used to come to my classes when she lived nearby. Oh, I'm sure she misses my classes. Sue, you can do them by post now. We're doing them by post. Let me know. Um, June says brilliant card. Um, Fafana is here. Hi. So, uh, yes. So there you go. That is a couple of ideas and as I said I, I don't want to spoil any surprises um, but I will be back with um, some more using these goodies because they are way more versatile than I gave them credit for when I first saw them in the catalogue. I am a big a big big fan of um, The Sweetest Time and as I said that's on page 21 so if you haven't got those you may like to put those on your wish list. Now I'm going to take you over the other side of the room again um, and just give you a little hint on what I've got coming up here on lives. So just move you across. Oh, I hope I'm not making any of you seasick. <laughs> there we go. Right. Okay. She's back. So, um, it has been, yeah, it's been a weird year, hasn't it? So, but I have kept on crafting. Um, I put on my Facebook, my personal Facebook page yesterday that I've had to change my emoji now because my hair is now grey at the top and blonde at the bottom. I'm going for the, this is the COVID dipped look. <laughs> I, I'm guessing that in another six months, the grey will be down to here. But I'm rocking my grey. Anyone else rocking your grey? <laughs> And my, and my COVID 10 pounds, which I am trying to lose now. Um, so I've been working on that. Um, Lynn's going to catch up later. She is cleaning after decorating. Um, Sarah says, I really am a temptress because she needs this bundle now. Um, and uh, Liz says, fabulous. Thank you. Um, oh, June lost the video. It'll be on catch up. So June, if you if you come back onto Elizabeth's craft room in just five minutes, um, it'll all be here on catch up for you. And oh, I tempted Ruby as well. <laughs> oh, right. And, and and Sue's up for a Sue's up for a class by post. So that's lovely, Sue. I would love to add you to my um, to my list. Um, yeah, Mary, Mary's joining me. She's joining me in the in the COVID dipped look. Um, and are you say, you're saying I'm, you can see a Maple Leaf Canada card there. Is that behind me? Have we got a Maple Leaf Canada card? Ooh, I don't know what you'll see. I don't know which one you're seeing now. We've got a smile banner that says NHS on the other side. For those in other parts of the world, that's National Health Service. So we had smile on the inside and then we had um, NHS and hearts on the outside to, to love our wonderful NHS. So, yeah, these are just some of those many projects that we've done um, during lockdown. Now, I have a little tempter for you for next week. I am just switching something on here. Because I'm now going to do a live um, here on Elizabeth's Craft Room every week at the same time. So 2pm UK time. I'm going to do it every week. And I forgot to switch that one on. Hang on a minute. Hang on just a minute. Come on. Are you working? No, it's not. Yes, it is. 
<laughs> Gotta love a live. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you what I'm doing next week. I did this um, with my lovely ladies this morning. And I have to say, this was the one that I did have a, a couple of little things not go quite right. But these are, and it's difficult to see in the light. I wonder if I turn this light off. You can see that these are flickering. These are little flickery candles in the top. But these are little candle holders. Now, obviously, not for real candles. <laughs> but I think they would be fun to do. They would be fun to do in really Christmassy ways. Although you can see I've gone just kind of like a wood grain look on them. And I have gone just for the pool party. But I will be making um, a candle holder next week um, at two o'clock. So if you'd like to come back and join me then, that would be lovely. Um, under the M in smile. Oh, this one here. Is that the one you're looking at? Yeah, I hadn't really thought of it like that. But yes, it does look, it does look a bit maple leaf. A little bit, a little bit more flowery here. But this looks really maple leaf, doesn't it? This was with before they retired because this was back in um, April. This was the sprinkles and I was afraid of the sprinkles and I did it live because I was so afraid of them. But we did quite a few so I was quite proud of myself for having done those. <laughs> right, okay, yes, it is from Colourful Seasons Blossom. It is, you're right, um, Alison. Yep, she has, she's spotted it. You see, you can tell when you've got Stampin' Up! demos around with you. Okay, lovely ladies, I think we're all ladies today, so l thank you very much for joining me here on Elizabeth's Craft Room for my first ever live um, in the real world. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, you are very welcome to come back next week. Um, Bev, who's just joined us a little bit late, we're just finishing Bev, but I'm going to put it all on catch up. Um, oh, I'm getting some little hearts and thumbs up. That's lovely. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I will pop it on catch up. Um, Sue, we need to have a conversation about classes and um, it'll be really good hopefully to see some of you next week if you can make it live. Um, Ellen said that was wonderful. Thank you. Oh, bless you. That's really nice. Kathy says you're awesome. I had no idea it was your first live. <laughs> yeah, first in the real world, Kathy. First in the real world. Okay, I will see you soon. Bye.